Hello and welcome to Fellowship and Reading. I'm Deborah Callahan, your host, along with Cheryl Williams, the co-host. And we have as our special guest today, Evangelist Larry Mays. I'd like to welcome you. Thank you. And you know, will you do, do something um, for us? Will you open up our show with a prayer, please? Yeah, we're okay. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the day. You said the steps of good men, good women, all about the Lord, and we just thank you for this show. We just ask that you have your way and that it will be led by the Spirit of God, Father, that we will say the things that you would have us to say. And, Father, we just ask that the heroes, that you would open up everybody that might hear, that they would be inspired by the things that you would have us to say. And we give you the glory and the honor in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 It's so good to have an evangelist to open up this show with a prayer. And we Amen. thank you very much. To our studio audience, I mean to our TV audience, if you're just tuning in, you've tuned in to Fellowship in Reading. It is a Christian ministry under the leadership of Dr. Tanya Lewis. It's part of Christian Enrichment. And it's also an affiliate of West Angeles Church of God in Christ, pastored by Bishop Charles Edward Blake. Our mission is to invite authors who have written Christian literature and who's using that as a tool for Christian ministry. And our guest today has written this book, and you can see it on the monitor, The Banner Mission, Ask Jesus to Save You Now. And I'm sure now that you're looking, say, oh, I've seen him before because he's on, on almost every block in, in L.A. You could find him anywhere. And so it's really good to have you with us today. Good to be here. Good. Now, before we get started again, I would like to give a shout out to our bishop, Bishop Charles Edward Blake, that world-class visionary leader, uh, the pastor of West Angeles Church of God in Christ. And also, he is our new bishop over the Church of God in Christ. Thank you, Bishop, for this opportunity that you're giving us to be able to have this ministry over the airwaves. And to Dr. Tanya Lewis, our love bug. You know, if it had not been for her, she is the founder and the director of this show. So to our love bug, I want to say thank you. We love you. And to our audience, you know, as we are getting started, we've told you about our guest. You probably have questions that you might want to ask him. At the end of the show, we want you to grab a paper and pencil, have it handy. So at the end of the show, we'll give you information on how to contact us, telephone number, email, fax. So any, any questions you may have as it relates to this show, please let us hear from you. Oh, you know what? We're open to suggestions. You might want to tell us how to improve our show. So we're open for that as well. But please get a paper and pencil and let us hear from you. And now to our co-host, Ms. Cheryl Williams. Well, I'd like to say welcome, welcome, welcome. And I just... I just love the layout of the book. Isn't I like that. that. The better it is. Yes. Ask Jesus to save you now. Amen. So where did that concept come from anyway? Well, uh, just by me carrying the banner over so many years, it's just, I was going to name the book A Shaking, A Breaking, and A Harvest. A Shaking, and A Breaking. I, the people were so familiar with seeing the banner, I just thought maybe it would be First of all, good to start out with, with the message. Yes. So that's why I, I came. So when God, when God first told you to carry that banner, what did you think? What did I think? Yeah. Well, it's been so long. I really didn't think because at the time he, I was so on fire for God, evangelizing in the streets before He gave me the banner. The banner. I was witnessing all walking all through Praise the day, God. just leading, you know, hundreds or two a day to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And this went on for quite a while. So when he gave me the vision, he just updated my strategy. I call it a, like when you're in a wall, you know, you, you, you uh, God give you different, different equipments to get the job okay. done. So to me, when he gave it to me, okay. it was just instead of me preaching. Right. A lot of times people drive by the street, two or three hundred thousand people a day can just read it. Amen. And, in that's and you don't have to message. open your mouth. Right. You see, the Bible said one plant, one water, but and God, God will bring the oh increase. Yes. You see, that looks simple. 
Yes. But that's the word of God. Mm -hmm. You see, mm -hmm. I have people read that to ask Jesus to save you, and they'll turn around and come back and say, hey, I was fitting to go kill my brother. Oh my I was goodness. fitting to go rob a bank. I asked him to do it, you know, many times. So, so this is just a, a assignment he gave me. Mm -hmm. I also am a preacher, teacher. I do the work of an evangelist, a, a pastor, but this is an assignment that he gave me to carry this message to the nation. Mm -hmm. Amen. And you know what I like about that banner? Because I've seen other banners that, you know, people carry. would uh, carry, but this one is really eye-catching. Some of the other ones, I mean, you know, it was biblical, but it was like a turn-off. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so you just, you know. Well, see, I just didn't, what I tell the people, I just didn't think of this. Right. This message came from God. Okay. You don't even find it in the Bible, like mm -hmm. ask Jesus to save you now. Mm -hmm. Now you might find whosoever call on the name right. of the Lord shall be saved. Uh, now it's the acceptable time to be saved. Thou shalt confess with them out the Lord Jesus and believe in the heart that God had raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. Mm -hmm. But just to ask Jesus to save you now. From Genesis to Revelation, to me, that's the whole Bible. Anybody ever ask you, well, why? Why should I ask Jesus to save me now? Anybody? There are many reasons for eternal life, uh, eternal. I mean, has anyone ever asked you that, actually? Oh, many Probably times. Really? All kind of yeah. questions. See, you're in the streets. Mm -hmm. You have people asking you questions. Just, uh, and a lot of times the enemy will send people to ask you questions, uh, to argue with you, but you mm -hmm. get used to that. See, you get skillful, and you know when to talk and when to you know, you have discernment right. of what's a God, and some people have good intentions, want to know, and some come just to That's confuse true. your day, right. to argue with you, and you don't have time mm -hmm. for that. Amen. Like you said in your book, that the Lord enabled you to be able to deal with the hostile public, and I'm sure seeing you in the places I've seen you, you're all over. Have you dealt with any hostile public? All time. At the hostile public? All time. I have to come against mostly back years ago, practically every city I go in, the first thing that would come against me would be law enforcement, mm -hmm. saying you can't preach here. I said, uh, you're supposed to be in, you do this in the church as a mm -hmm. separation of church and state. Mm -hmm. Now I got to go through it telling them I pay tax. <laughs> My first amendment is I can <laughs> preach the gospel as long as I'm in nobody's doorway or nobody's mm -hmm. private property. Mm -hmm. I have, but anybody else can get out there and do anything, oh, but they're going to come on and lock me up. Oh, my I've goodness. been in jail over 20 times over the last 20 years in different cities, but it's not that way now because God is mostly given the breakthrough. But it's all for the glory of God. Usually mm -hmm. when I go to jail, more people get saved by me being in jail <laughs> than they do. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. God. So, it's so it's many. See, the enemy, we don't want to talk about it, mm -hmm. but we have an enemy. Mm -hmm. The Bible said we wrestle not with flesh and blood, but principalities and powers, that the enemy will use people oh, yes. to try to stop you. Because mm -hmm. there is no other name given among men whereby man must be saved but That's right. the name of Jesus. Yes. You don't care how many signs you hold up about Buddha, Harry right. Christian, or uh -huh. Jehovah, or who. Right. But Jesus said he's the way. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I believe. And anything I believe, I'll stand for it. Amen. Mm -hmm. And you know what it seems like? To just, it seems like the rights or the laws seem to protect other folk more than they do, the you know, Christian, the Christians. Uh, They're just trying to take Christianity out that's, of everything. That's the system. So we know who's behind it. Right. right. That's, that's the state. system yes. of the world, mm -hmm. you see. And once we get the vision that we're dealing with this, we should start cooperating together. Yeah. Even spiritual leaders, they should have the vision and the know that it's just two set of people. I tell them it's the lost and the saved. And if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. anything. <laughs> you see what yeah. I'm saying? Amen. You can't be on, if I tell people communist people, they'll stand up on there, get on that TV and tell you we communists. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ever what religion they are, they'll tell you. Right. Now, if we say we believe in Jesus, tell it. Don't you know your testimony can help somebody else? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, we, they think they're right, we think we're right. But at least if I think I'm right, I'm going to speak on what I think is right. Yeah. In your book, in one of the chapters, you talked about um, tragedy and commitment. And you said about, I think it was your wife that was in the hospital. Yeah. 
and then a miraculous thing happened. Yeah, Tell us uh, about. I was down, I was doing the O.J. Simpson trial on a mission. The Lord had me there. I was there every day, both trials. Didn't miss a day. But my wife was sick in the hospital, and so it came to my heart to go see her, to lead the trial downtown and go see her in the hospital. And so I went, and when I walked in the hospital, she had died. And I laid hands on her, and she came back alive. And she lived uh, almost two years longer. Mm -hmm. And she yeah. did the, O.J. Simpson had a civil trial out in Santa Monica. And she worked, she worked for a law firm. And she worked the whole time, so she was with me. Wow, before what a blessing. She died, you know, two more years before she died. I was with her two more years, the mm -hmm. Lord. And he said, let her go the last time. Because, you know, certain people sometimes in our life for a certain season. Yes. And it's time to. Right. Move on to the mm -hmm. next. But she tells about some of the stuff, things in the book she saw wow. in heaven. Wow. My mother died and oh, she came God. back. To oh, okay. That was amazing. That was yeah. miraculous. Yeah. That yeah. certainly was miraculous. So, so we still have the ability to heal. I mean, what, well, God. Well, well what did Jesus say? The last thing he told the disciples when he went back to heaven, he said, Now you go into all the world and you preach the gospel to every creature. He that believes shall be saved. He that believe not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. You believe them. Mm -hmm. They shall lay hands on the sick. They shall cast out devils. Mm -hmm. They shall raise the dead. And he said, greater works you did. Right. God left us here for one thing, to do the works he did. Even greater works. What do you mean by that? He was at one place at the time. But now it's many of us. We're all over. And look at the chapter the world in. For instance, you're on TV right now. You can shoot the name of Jesus all over the world. They didn't have that technology back then. We don't have no excuse. Hey. <laughs> hey. And talking about going out into the world, um, your African mission, tell us about that. Okay, when I, my wife, uh, the Lord had shared me to go to Africa about three years before my wife had died, and she didn't want to go. And so it worried me. She said, I don't want to go. So, but the Lord comforted me and said, well, that's okay. Don't go. Uh -huh. So after she died, I was laying on my bed one day, and I had a vision. I wasn't asleep, but I was over in Africa. And I saw billy goats. I saw people with swollen legs. I saw people crippled on sticks. And the Lord came to me and said, I want you to go to Africa. I heard the voice. I didn't know nobody in Africa. I'd never, never been to Africa before. And I said, Lord, go to Africa. And so I had a, a friend of mine, the pastor, he lived in Atlanta now. I called him. I said, brother, I was asleep. I was, uh, had a dream while I go about Africa. And uh, he said, well, I got a friend to be here next week. I said, why don't you come? When he come, he's coming here from Africa. And said, when he come, why don't you come by? On the I want to introduce you to him. And maybe you and him could set up something. So I said, okay. So that week kept rolled by. And so I went by. And I didn't know it was the same guy that I had preached five years ago at Sister Crawford's church, Bam Crawford's church, Sister Pastor Crawford's church. He was there when I was preaching five years ago. And he said, he asked the Lord that day, said, Lord, will you send that man to Africa? Mm. And it was the same man showed up at the time that God was telling me to go to Africa. So he told me, he said, I'm going to St. Louis to do a revival. And he said, send and get what you need, your passport, get your shots and everything. And he said, I'll be back in three weeks. And he said, I want you to go back with me. Mm. And so that's how I ended up in Africa. I went to stay two weeks. I wound up staying three months. I mean, it just, the Lord just blessed it. Was that the Dr. Gunn you mentioned? Dr. Gunn, Dr. Okay. George Gunn. Okay. Uh -huh. He used to work with uh, Adahosa from Nigeria. He's uh -huh. passed now. Uh -huh. and, and aren't so, you here longer than you said you expected to be in California? Yeah, I came to stay two weeks. <laughs> 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 I, came, I came. But see, before I left Mississippi, I, I had a dream of kid with backpacks on the back, mm -hmm. like going back to school. So it kept coming to me. So my sister had a birthday party, and I had a friend to pass in Bakersfield, so they wanted me to bury him. So I really I came, thought I was coming to my sister's birthday party and go to his funeral in Bakersfield. But every time I would try to go back home, 
something would hinder me. Mm. And I know it was Lord, I was forcing, he would tell me, I, I know he would tell me not to go, but I'm still going. Mm -hmm. So every time I get ready to go, a storm would come up in Texas oh. somewhere, stop me. Get ready to go the next week, another storm come up. Mm -hmm. Last time I got ready to go, well, God hit hit my car and totally, <laughs> oh, totally all goodness. the pieces, you know. And so, so your assignment is here for now. Yeah, for now. Oh, okay. okay. And but my heart, I I want to be back in Mississippi, but I just settle down there, Lord. I'm gonna be here until you see go. Because now you 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 covered the O.J. Simpson trial the first time, and now that he's gotten into more trouble, you are covering. I covered the first time the criminal trial. I didn't miss a day. I covered the civil trial. I didn't miss a day. Now, I missed four days during the criminal trial. My wife, she was sick. She wanted to go to the Cancun, Mexico. And the Lord spoke to her and told me to take her mm -hmm. because it would be the last trip that she would go on. Oh. And so I carried her to, we went to Cancun, but they closed the trial down the four days I was gone. So I didn't miss yeah, one day mm. at that. Yeah. So I did all the civil trial. Mm -hmm. And I did this one last week. So. So all three of the tracks. Oh, okay, okay. So what's your current project? You're working on something currently? Well, uh, a new CD, uh, already at, ready to go almost right now. Uh, new, been working on it quite a while. And uh, I'm believing the Lord that the Lord is going to get the story out 25 years of ministry hmm. uh, and, and another book. Okay. And okay. equipping the saints. My main thing now is is equipping the saints in the body of Christ to get out and do what God has called us to do. Mm -hmm. That's my main thing is equip the saints to get out and do the work of the ministry. Mm -hmm. And it all, it's all in a package, but the function is to, is to evangelize the world, take this world for Jesus Christ. Because there's two kingdoms, the kingdom of dark, the kingdom of light. So we should be winning these people to Jesus Christ Snatching them out of one kingdom, bringing them into the other. Mm -hmm. It's a warfare. Mm -hmm. If you ain't going forward, you're going backwards. Mm -hmm. Hey, still on the front line. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 now, now, I tell people, a lot of people say, well, that, that's not my job. But see, we all have different callings and different talents and different abilities. But it's everybody's call to be a witness. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be my witness. Mm -hmm. Amen. And if you don't know nothing but Jesus Christ loves you, you plan to see. Mm -hmm. God can take that and, and save a person. Mm -hmm. Amen. But see, we've complicated the word of God so a step one, a step two, a step three, a step four, a step five, how to get this, how to do this, how to do this. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, whosoever call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. saved. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting that you said that because I just saw a book last week that said seven steps to Christ. Oh, uh -huh. six, uh -huh. six, uh -huh. six steps, steps to Christ. Yeah. 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 Hey, know. just ask oh, him to save me. Hey. Like a cookbook. Like the thief on the cross. He said, Lord said, said remember me. Jesus <laughs> said today. <laughs> he didn't have to go down there and read John 3.16. Uh, right. Jesus said today you'll be with me. Uh -huh. Amen. Mm -hmm. So you're a pretty good singer. I heard you... Uh, ministered at the uh, African Marketplace one yeah. day, and they loved you so much, they called you back the second day. Oh, yeah, yeah, goodness. yeah. Uh, the Lord has bless, blessed me to minister in songs, and uh, uh, I love it because what, whatever God calls you to do, you really, you get that release when you do it. Mm -hmm. The longer you don't do it, the more, uh, I can't explain it, but you feel better if you call to preach, preach. If you call the minister in song, minister in song, and there's a certain relief come behind that Amen. when you do it. Like you know, the song where he, fulfillment. the song where he leads me, I will follow. And yeah. so you will find if he's leading you, follow, because guess what? You have no problem. No I, problem. Think, I think about my career because I said, I know the Lord had to lead me, and I followed him because I worked for 33 years and never ran into any difficulties See on that? the job. So Praise I said, God. Where he leads me, I certainly will follow. That's, that's it. Lay that, lay that path down. And that's, for that's me. the only reason he left us here, mm -hmm. is to finish, to be at love one another. And I tell people, jealousy in the church, we got to put it down. Mm -hmm. See, whatever I do for you, I'm doing for me because we're part of the body. Exactly. If you rejoice, I should rejoice. Mm -hmm. You see? So we got to, God has set in the church a team. 
and we are to work together. This is not a one-man show. Mm -hmm. If we get find our place, God, I saw a quilt, and pieces were put in it. God said, tell the people, find their place, and that's what they get. Mm -hmm. You got preachers that's preaching need to be working, you got some working need to be preaching. Mm -hmm. You got, you know, I'm, I'm just saying how so mixed up. Find your calling. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's where you operate. Run in your lane. Exactly. You see? And so everything will work out. Mm -hmm. And we're at the place now, we need one another. Mm -hmm. And the only time you look down on a man or brother or sister is when you're picking him up. Because it could have been me. Exactly. Oh. Yeah. But by the grace yeah. of God. It could have been me. <laughs> uh -huh. You see? Love. So what have, what have you learned after, by writing this book? Have you any, any eye openers from doing this project? Have I had any? Yes. Well, during the whole book, I, I had eye opening experiences from God was being built in. And it's not just a book. To me, it's a reality mm -hmm. of what, it's not just reading something. This book is, has really, God has performed what you read in this book. So that's yes. It would be sort of like you read the book of Acts. Mm -hmm. That's what that book is. Oh, okay. okay. The signs, the wonders, the miracles, the multitudes receiving the gospel, mm -hmm. witnessing from city to city. That's the New Testament church. Mm -hmm. That's what we should be doing today mm -hmm. is being an example of the early church. Okay. You see? You've done so much. Now, just think, 10 years from now, what, what will Larry Mays be doing 10 years from now? Well, what do you hope to be doing? Well, Ten years from now, I walk by faith, not by sight. Sometime I don't know from minute to minute what I'm going to do. <laughs> I'm serious. So now, yeah, the day when I get up, I say, Lord, lead me today. Okay, okay. And whatever come my way, that's, what you, that's the way I'm using it. Now, he might show me to go somewhere ahead of time. Mm -hmm. But like right now, I'm just walking my faith, doing what I'm supposed to do on a daily base. Mm -hmm. And whatever you tell me to do, if you give me direction, I go. A little story the other day. He told me to go by and see a preacher. And I was just driving down the streets. And to me, I said, why am I thinking about going to see a, this preacher? But about three weeks ago, this preacher said he was driving down the street. said, the Lord told him, said, go get that man $500. So he said he went to the bank to get me $500. And said, when he come back by, I was on Crenshaw and Florence, said I had gone. Mm. But I went to Vaughn Market right down two foot from where I live. Okay. About two weeks later, I met this man. He said, hey, you, come here. He said, aren't you the one to take the banner? I said, yes, sir. He said, he said, about three weeks ago, the Lord told me to give you $500. When I got back, you had gone. Mm. He said, but I want to give it to you. Whoa. And so the other day, I was coming home, and the Lord laid on my heart, said, go by and thank that pastor for, for giving you that money. So I didn't do it. Uh -uh. I just kept driving. So I got on up to Florence, it kept coming, coming, said, go by and thank that pastor, I said, for giving you that money. I still didn't do it. Oh. I drove on to turn into my house, and it come so heavy, wow. I turned around. <laughs> and I had to drive all the way back to San Pedro. <laughs> and when I got there, on the churchyard, wasn't a car nowhere. So I said, Lord, I must have been hearing the devil. Something done told me, ain't nobody here. So I turned around, finna leave a little boy. I said, hey, Mr. Holy. He said, who are you looking for? I said, I'm looking for the pastor. He said, he's in the back back there, mm -hmm. him and the staff. Say, you want to see him? I said, yeah. He said, come on back. So he carried me back there. So they was back there and got the door. said, what you doing bringing him back here? He didn't know me. said, what you doing bringing that man back here? <laughs> but his wife saw me. She said, I know that man. Let him in here. Oh, okay. And so the pastor <laughs> said, come on in. Come on in the back. So I told him, I said, pastor, I didn't have an appointment to see you, but the Lord led me by. Uh -huh. And I just want to tell you how thankful I was to, to receive that money and how God told me to led me to tell you. Mm -hmm. And so he blessed me with a little more money. He wow. said and he said he said I want my he said I want you to meet my staff. So he led me, he said, Y'all don't know this man, but I'm gonna tell you who he is. Mm -hmm. And so the next morning I was downtown preaching the Lord said, Now I want you to go to the OJ trial. Now I'm gonna just show you by being obedient to the little thing. Now with the little help that he had given me was the money I needed to make the trip. 
and the trip up there, they showed the banner all over the world. Praise mm. God. Look at God. Wow, that's a blessing. I'm showing you how step by step yeah. and being obedient oh, yes. to little things. Oh, yes. Now, that's just one instance. Okay. But even down coming to a telephone call, if God brings your heart to call somebody, do yeah. that. You don't know why God wants you to call them. Amen. Now, I'm sure there are other or others in the audience. I, I know everyone dreams of writing a book, and I think everybody has a book in them, you know, at least one anyway. Yeah. So what advice would you give to someone who, who's interested in writing? Writing a book, well. Especially Christian literature. Well, if, see, God, God, that's a gift. Usually going through the day, if you keep getting these things, if God is putting stuff in your heart, I always carry you that. I, I try to keep a little tape record on me. But I, I eat the right. Keep me something to write with. Always keep those important things that God is telling you. Jot, jot them down. I either talk them in a recorder. And then, you know, go on as you go on. You have enough on there for God to put all that together and give you a message. Okay. So that's the best advice because God, if, if it's in you, that's going to come to your day all through the day. Thoughts coming to your mind mm -hmm. that you should be jotting down. And you shouldn't go to your grave with a book in your, that God has given you with something that's going to bless somebody, a record, a book, or whatever. You should get it out before you go to the grave. Okay, and that's, that's great. To our TV audience, well, our time has come to an end, and we ask you to tune in the next time you hear, see Fellowship and Reading. Just stop. Don't change that channel, but tune in. And you know what? Before I close, I just want to appeal to you for your salvation. Romans 10 and 9 said, If you confess with your mouth Amen. the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Not you might be saved, that you may be saved, but you shall be, shall saved. be saved. So if you have not been saved, that's all you have to do. It's confess, believe, and receive. Amen. And guess what? You shall be saved. So again, get the paper and pencil, get the information at the end, and let us hear from you. But remember, to God be the glory.